Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe ye also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were Well, both this morning and, and then the present book oh, we're on. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Welcome to a beautiful day again out here in Fernvale. A little bit cooler than yesterday, which for a lot of people is fantastic. And for a very small minority, it may be not so fantastic. But uh, yeah, praise God, it's wonderful. The birds are singing. The first thing you notice when you hop out of your car up here is the birds are just like, la, la, la. This is good. Eh? And so are we. And they sing all night. I, I noticed too, watching on, online, that uh, while Adrian's talking, we hear the and this sort of stuff happening. All of... We did hear that. Yes, yes. The microphones are wonderful. They're picking up everything. Beautiful. Okay, so welcome uh, everybody. And uh, we will begin um, our worship this morning, our devotion, with the use of hymn number 29. Uh, we would see Jesus in the old. It's up there on the screen, so we got this. That's forward, that's backwards. Good. We would see Jesus for the shadows lengthen across the Oh, 
Gracious Father, we thank you that uh, Jesus is all we need. For when we look to him, we see everything we need to know about life, we, both this world and the heavenly world. For he came to reveal you to us, and he came to reveal the potential that is uh, within us, the seed that you've planted within us. And Father, I just pray that as we look to him, as we contemplate Jesus this morning, that you will bless us that we shall be like him, for he is like you. And that brings us great joy and hope. And we praise you for hearing this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So the theme for the camp is we shall be like him. Amen. It has been said, <laughs> I heard that last night, I have heard it said many a time by many a brother, not so much the sisters, but the brothers that I talk to in, in uh, my church, that we will never be like Jesus. We will never be like him. Until we are just sinners. Yeah, he will change us at his coming in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. But now, no, there's no hope. We'll be sinners till Jesus comes. And I'm just like, oh, that's a sad thought. It's a really sad thought. I don't believe that that's what the scripture intends for us, to be overcome by sin all of our lives. For Jesus said, to him that overcomes, to him that overcomes, seven times in the book of Revelation to the churches, to him that overcomes, which is a promise, isn't it? Yeah, it's not a... It's not to him that is overcome. It's not to him that is overcome. Amen. <laughs> it has been misquoted. Um, no, so th there is victory. And, but what is our victory? What is that which will make us overcomers? Or should I say, who is that which will make us overcomers? The key um, is what we focus at. And so we, we are here at this camp, this beautiful uh, campsite. And just a, a quick question, whoever would like to, to answer. Why are you here? What's your expectation at this feast? To become like Jesus. <laughs> okay, I'll just paint it. It's beautiful. To, to be like Jesus. You want to be blessed by him as well. Yes, Judy. I want to be blessed with light, health, and strength. Oh, light, health, and strength. Amen. Quote, unquote. Beautiful. Um, yes, light, health, and strength for today and for each day that we move forward. And that's a promise. We will be. We shall be as we contemplate Jesus. Uh, this morning I'd like to look at uh, the statement uh, that was made by a group of foreigners that attended a feast in Israel. A group of Greek, a group of Greeks that came to the feast. And um, it's, it's found in John chapter 12. And John chapter 12 is very interesting because it starts off with uh, the feast at Simon's home. Okay, there's a beautiful feast there, and everybody was really interested because Jesus was one of the guests there. And it's, it's, yeah, we're not talking about specifically that, but a lot happened at that feast, at, uh, at Simon's house, at the beginning of the week. And then from there, uh, it moved into, on verse 12, the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Well, that was really exciting. If, if the feast at Simon's house was supposed to be like a big occasion, imagine how big this was. You know, everybody goes out to, to see the one that they're the, with the great expectations. This is the Messiah. Hosanna, Hosanna, they were crying out, laying out the palm branches and everything. And so the, the, uh, the, the mood was great. The spirit was just electric in Jerusalem at that time. And by the time we come to verse, um, verse 19, we have an interesting response. 
course, we know that Lazarus um, had been raised, you know, prior, and Lazarus was at the feast as well at Simon's place, and that the people are crying out to Jesus, and the response of the Pharisees was very interesting. The Pharisees in verse 19, therefore said among themselves, perceive ye how you prevail nothing. Things aren't coming together like we are wanting, like we are hoping. Behold, the world has gone after him. That him is Jesus. The Pharisees are a bit upset that Jesus was getting all the attention and it wasn't on them anymore. They weren't the focus. They're like, hmm, because there have been a long running... Uh, Enmity, I guess we can use that word, enmity between the Pharisees and Jesus. They didn't like what they saw in him. But then we move to the next verse. It says, um, and there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. Where did they come from? Which direction? Which direction is Greece compared to Israel? Uh, compared to that, remember the Magi, at, at the, uh, the Magi when, when Jesus was born, they came from the east. Where did the Greeks come from? The west. Yeah, the, the Greeks would have come from the west. Okay, just interesting that at the beginning of his life, the, those uh, men um, came from the east, and now the Greeks are coming down, and they wanted to see Jesus as well. There seems to be an interest among those that aren't necessarily of the fold to know more about, who is this Jesus? Does that give you hope? Does that give you hope moving forward? Well, who am I going to talk to? Because sometimes the door may be closed down on those that are close to home, um, maybe within the religious community that you're involved in. But God has his people, and he's actually speaking that to them in the east and to the west. And so the Greeks come down to worship at the feast, which is uh, the feast of the Jews. Is it, is it not? Isn't that the... Because you see, it was, it was done away with at the cross. That was for the Jews. But why were the Greeks there? Maybe no one told them it was only for the Jews. But they'd heard about this man called Jesus. They'd heard about him, and they wanted to know some more. So the same, these Greeks, came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. The Greeks longed to know more about his mission. Who is this guy? What is he about? What, what is he teaching? We've heard all these rumors. We want to know personally about this Jesus and his mission. And as we gather together, and as we're joined by people from around the world, and from North Queensland, and from various places around our state, do we not share the same the same thought, the same, the same desire. We would see Jesus. We want to know more about this man. We want to know more about his mission. Because we want to be more like Jesus. This is what we've been singing about this morning. And so in our time together uh, at, at this uh, feast, I, I pray we will continue to focus on our Lord Jesus Christ. Because Jesus says, as you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so, indirectly, as we're looking to Jesus, we're looking to the Father. But of course, we look to both. But the focus of the Greeks, of course, was Jesus. If we get Jesus right, if we understand who Jesus is, then we'll really know who the Father is. If we misunderstand who Jesus is, we're sadly, sadly, very sadly, going to misunderstand who the Father is. And so, um, may our Father pour out his Spirit upon us. Uh, this morning and as we continue through the feast that we might know more about his son and uh, and by beholding him become changed and join him in his mission and his work of glorifying his father and so yeah that's our little worship this morning uh, this morning for prayer um, in our prayer time uh, I, I just want us again to focus on those that are near and dear to us, in our families, uh, in, our, in our churches especially. Th this is crunch time. For, for our church, the, the next period of time, the next 12 months, this, this Sabbath year, is, is really crunch time for our churches and the, and the people that are close to us um, to make some big decisions.
about about their Lord and Saviour, who who they at the moment uh, misunderstand. And so let's continue to pray for these people, and and pray for ourselves that God will open up more opportunities for us to to share. The, the blessings of the knowledge that we have of the glory of God as we've seen it in the face of Christ Jesus. So yeah, now's the time to, to pray and uh, enjoy your day and uh, see you back here at 9.30. Okay.